All right, the last part of chapter 13, and this finishes up our solutions discussion, and it's going to be on colligative properties. Okay, colligative properties. What the heck is a colligative property? Well, a colligative property depends on the um, concentration of solute particles. Okay, depends on the concentration of solute particles, not their identity. Okay, so if we put more particles in, that property changes, that physical or chemical property will change. That's known as a colligative property. Okay? The types of colligative properties that we're concerned with in chemistry one is the freezing point depression. That states that a freezing point of a solution is lower than that of the pure solvent. So that means you add something to this mixture and instead of freezing at say 90 degrees Celsius it freezes at 80 degrees Celsius so it lowers uh, the freezing point okay lowers the freezing point boiling point elevation is as you add um, a some substance to uh, uh, another substance that boiling point is higher than the actual boiling point for example, water. If you add salt to water, it actually will boil at a higher temperature than 212 degrees Fahrenheit to 100 degrees Celsius. Same thing with freezing. If you add salt to water and try to freeze it, it's not going to be frozen at 32 degrees. <clears throat> it's actually, depending on how much salt is in it, going to be a little bit lower than 32 degrees. So that keeps the uh, state of the ice, or the, the, instead of being in the solid form, it stays in the liquid form at a much lower temperature. Okay, so this is what's actually happening. Say we have some water molecules in uh, this this system. We'll call this box of system. All right, water we know is a solvent. When it is pure, water freezes at zero degrees Celsius and boils at one hundred degrees Celsius. But if we add something like, for example, we've added uh, some some ions in here. These ions actually go and disturb the intermolecular forces that keep the water molecules held together, that are attracting these water molecules. Now, an intermolecular force is a force, or attractive forces between molecules. So notice how it's breaking some of these intermolecular forces. Instead of the positively charged oxygen of one water molecule being um, <clears throat> somewhat attached or somewhat attracted rather to the positively charged hydrogen molecule of the next molecule those ions are breaking that attraction up it's changing the charge in there so what actually happens is the intermolecular forces are what cause the pure substance to either freeze or boil since you do not have these strong intermolecular forces it's going to take longer for this to freeze so that's why the freezing point is actually lower. And kind of the same things happens with boiling point. Okay, If we put in uh, regular water, we start to boil it, it's going to boil at 100 degrees. But if we put in some sugar molecules or a sucrose molecule into this mixture, it won't boil at 100 degrees. It'll actually go a little warmer. That's because the sucrose molecules are affecting the intermolecular attractions between these water molecules and the vapor pressure uh, is actually a little bit lower so it takes a little more temperature when you have this in the mix to make it uh, boil so you may have to you may boil at 110 say degrees Celsius now applications where would we apply this Salting icy roads. Well, if we add salt to bridges and different things like that, um, that actually will cause the ice that's on these bridges to melt. Okay, when they melt, that allows safer travel across the bridges. Also, when making ice cream, if you've ever made ice cream at home, and we're actually going to do that in, in in this class, if you make ice cream and you put salt in your ice cream freezer. That actually makes that water, that ice, colder. It allows it to be get, it allows it to get much colder than 32 degrees. Which, if the outside, the ice around the barrel or whatever you're using to make your ice cream, is colder than 32, it allows what's on the inside, your milk and things like that, the the liquid inside that, to actually freeze. Uh, we also use boiling point elevation and 
freezing point depression in antifreeze for cars in both uh, fish and insects. Um, cars, if you put regular water in your car and it gets to 32 degrees one night, well, you run a risk of that water in your radiator freezing and cracking your radiator. Now, what you can do is you can replace it with that green, thick, viscous liquid um, called antifreeze. That allows the temperature to get much cooler and allows it to get much warmer. Um, you should know that water boils at about 100 degrees Celsius, so it can actually uh, take a little bit more than 100 degrees. If you've ever noticed, there's a temperature gauge on your car. So these are just some applications and a brief overview of colligative properties, just so you know what they are. Uh, the more particles you have in there, the more interactions you have between the particles and the, of the solute and the solvent, and less intermolecular forces you have between the solvent and solvent molecules. So just a little bit of an overview. Hopefully that kind of helps clarify some things.